Hello everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this video I'm going to share five quick fixes for some common video editing frustrations that you might find in Adobe Premiere Pro. So I've got some random footage on my desktop that I'm going to drag into this blank project in our media bin. We can begin working with these examples. So first of all, if we're dragging a new clip onto our timeline, it'll create a new sequence based on the dimensions of that clip. I can go to the info tab and see that since this clip is 1920 by 1080, the sequence is also 1920 by 1080. So what if you have two different cameras that you're working on a project with and one of them shoots in 4K while the other doesn't or shoots in less than 1080, you're gonna have a little bit of a mismatch. So this clip right here is 4K. I can know that because when I go to the info tab for this one, it's 3840 by 2160. And if I drag it in, it kind of looks a bit cropped in. We don't get the full dimensions as you see the clip has. In this case, we just have to go to the effects control panel and scale it down so that it matches resolution. 50 will work fine here. And we're not really losing anything because we went from bigger to smaller. But let's say we were working in the reverse case. We started our new project sequence as a 4K file then when we, when we drop smaller files in there, like this 1080p file, that's why you also might see a clip pop in your sequence and just not fill up the frame. So mind your sequence sizes. Remember, if, if you want to export 1080 or if your whole project is in 4K, you can scale these up as well, but then you have the issue of perhaps losing a little bit of quality by stretching. But sometimes it doesn't look too bad, and sometimes for certain cameras, you can only do higher frame rates uh, in lower qualities and so you might face this issue and have to work with it as best as you can. This is also why sometimes when you go to drag a clip over to a blank project, if it's not the same size and dimensions of the original clip, it'll ask you if you want to change the sequence to form to the clip or just keep the existing sequence settings. So that might happen when you're purposely working with different sizes. Now that we've actually got our timeline open, what about when we actually go to drag over a video clip, but for some reason it's only dragging over the audio or it's only dragging over the video and you know there's audio or you know there's both parts, but you can't get them both to be dragged on. Well, this is a very common problem and you might not realize to look here, but on the left hand side, you see the different tracks as in audio one, video one, all the different tracks, one, two, three. And if it's not dragging over what you want it to drag over, it's probably because you don't have that highlighted or toggled for source patching. So you can see if it's blue or not. And if it's not, then it won't allow anything to come in and overwrite. But if it's on, you can get some overwrite action happening. So that's a quick fix for why things aren't dragging how you want. I know that one drove me crazy for a while. Number three is, let's say you did a little bit of organization halfway through editing a long project. You know, you took it from the temporary folder in your desktop and you moved your clips to the proper organized folders. So now they're in a different place. Well, you'll find that when you go back to Premiere, everything will come up red. It'll say media offline. It looks like your whole project is broken. And if it doesn't automatically pop up with the link media tool, which it might like in this case, let's say it doesn't, you can always right click on your clip and choose the link media option. It'll pop up with that folder. It says it used to be in the desktop folder footage. Where'd it go? You can press locate. It'll open up all of your drives and folders, in which case you can go to the folder that you do know it's at or search for the clip names and double click on the appropriate clip that it's trying to find. If you've got multiple offline clips in question and you do this for one of the clips in the appropriate folder, Premiere is usually smart enough to realize that that's where everything is and it automatically links things back up based on the file name. And you don't have to worry about any of the effects or cuts or timing and sequencing that you did being offline because it's just replacing the original source footage and remembering all the edits that you did. So hopefully things don't get too screwed up as long as you didn't go crazy renaming and moving a whole bunch of stuff. So that's how to fix and relink offline media. But let's say you're actually editing your project and you find that one of the clips is a bit shaky. So if we go to the effects panel, a common solution and effect that 
you might often be reaching for is the warp stabilizer. And this just smooths out any shaky camera movement, which these clips don't really have, but let's say we dragged it on there. You might get this error message that says, warp stabilizer requires clip dimensions to match sequence. And remember earlier how this was a different dimension. This is a 4K clip in a sequence that's 1080. So warp stabilizer doesn't know what to do, it's confused. And it even tells you the solution right here, fix by nesting. And what do they mean by that? It means you can right click on this clip or a combination of clips and right click and nest them. So I'm gonna delete this effect. I'll nest it. You can name the nested sequence, whatever you want. And then you can apply the warp stabilizer onto the nested sequence and you'll see that you don't get that error message anymore because the nested sequence acts as a 1080p file or clip. So it might give you some other issues. It might make warp stabilizer's job a little bit harder to do it this way, but it does fix that error message and allow the clip to be analyzed. Another reason that you might not be able to do things with warp stabilizer is when you do have warp stabilizer applied to a clip, you'll notice that you can no longer adjust the speed of a clip. So if I use the rate stretch tool, R, and speed the clip up, fast forward it, you'll see it says warp stabilizer and speed can't be used on the same clip, in which case, again, the solution is to nest the warp stabilized clip after you do it, and then speed up the nested sequence. So that's a quick fix for those two quick issues that you might find when trying to use the warp stabilizer and it just won't let you. I have a whole separate video on this if you're still wondering why your clips are coming out like jello. But finally, let's talk about how do we even unnest this clip? Let's say we had actually nested a whole bunch of things together because we thought that we were gonna do some sort of adjustments on it and we realized that we don't want them nested anymore because we want to re-edit or resequence certain things more easily. There's not really a quick way to right click and unnest something. You can only just nest it further. And if you're too far ahead in your sequence to press Command Z and just undo like that, or ever go to the history panel and don't want to go all the way back and undo a whole bunch of other stuff you did, is if you didn't know, whenever you nest a sequence, it does just show up as a nested sequence in your original timeline. But if you ever double click it, it'll open that nested sequence into its own timeline because that's what it is. And from here, you can copy and paste all these clips and repaste them back into the original wherever you want. Or whenever you create a nested sequence or any sequence for that matter, it also shows up in your project media bin. So here it is right here, nested sequence 04, that's the name, whatever name you gave it. And instead of copy and pasting, I can always just click and drag it back into where it was and overwrite whatever I wanted to overwrite. And there I have my original clips back again and I can edit them however I want. So that's how you can bring things back from their nest or just work with them in their unnested form. So those are five quick fixes and solutions for some common frustrations that you might be facing while video editing in Adobe Premiere Pro. If you enjoyed this video, let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you have an extra tip of your own or a frustration that you might wanna see me tackle in a future video. If you did enjoy this video, definitely leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel to stay tuned for all of my future videos, and follow me on social media at Justin OD Show on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter to reach out and stay connected with me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.